Okay, we left off base. Okay, page 62, Chav Dalit Beis. Now, when one says the Kriyashma, where do you hold it, Sitzis? You hold it in your left hand. And you hold it opposite your heart. You hold it touching your heart. Mitzah lechos at tzitzis, biyat ha-smolis, biyat ha-smolis, keneged li v'bshaz kriyashma. There's a mitzvah to hold the tzitzis in your left hand, opposite your heart, when you say the shema, rebel is the dover. What are you alluding to? What it says in the shema, v'ayu ad vorm ha-ela ha-shanochim, v'tzav chayom alev ovecho. It's alev ovecho. So, if one doesn't, one's yotze, but that's why we do it. You hold it like, this. We'll see in a moment. You're supposed to put it between your your four the, your, the, the two, your four and fifth so yeah. and you wrap it around and you go like this. That's where you hold it. The strings. The strings. The Speak to David. He'll tell you how to put it in his pants. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the nuts makes no difference the you won't get complicated so you won't get complicated so think about the nuts the main thing is the strings so what's the difference between putting it there so that's the it's not the kapala <coughs> we'll see one second dalit <coughs> base yeah betakaros api Shekoshin zeh, im zeh lozbab. It's a sitzis. Where am I holding base? Biot smolis, kosu bekisi arizal. Here, the Rizal writes in his writings, sheyozi min kmitzel zeres. Here, it's between the kmitzel. The kmitzel is when a person that takes the palm full of flour. So that's what is the fourth finger. So it's between the fourth and fifth finger. You hold it in both hands. When you come to the third paragraph, tzitzis, you hold it in both hands, and you're supposed to look what says, and you hold it until then. Then you kiss the tzitzis, you put it down. It's interesting, he doesn't speak about kissing the tzitzis during tzitzis. It says when you let go, that's when you kiss it. I, I told the, the Vilna Gon, never, kiss never kissed, of course it would be he so kissing so as a hefshik. After he says Shema, I kissed No, 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 no. It says he, he, he says you kiss the, the Vilna so And in the situation where you're not permitted to speak, you don't kiss it either. That's a school of not to become blind. That's why they put on the rice. It's a school of for, for vision. Some put it on their forehead and then on their eyes. There you're acknowledging Shem's Pukeh Chivrim. He allows the, the blind to see. When you wake up, you see. Here it's a reism or so. At first, look, there's a mitzvah. There's a mitzvah to look at the tzitzis. According to some, they count that as a mitzvah. Looking at the tzitzis is a mitzvah. Reism or so. Everything you're saying is affecting you. Well, it says uschartem. The reason most uschartem is called kolmitz v'zashem, right? When you look at it, it causes a person to remember. I mentioned the name of the chavetz chaim. When a prayer person feels he may be tempted to do the wrong thing, you should look at your tzitzis. Because it says the reason most uschartem is kolmitz v'zashem elokecho, elokechem. It causes it to be, become more reality. It's like when you first study something, it's easier to be in control. Time passes, and it's something in the past. It's much more difficult. Because at best it's recall. This more recall. Uschartem. You remember it as if you just studied it now. So therefore, it gives the person the ability to take control over his life. Alevovcho, alevovecho, halevu b'smol, umitzazo matzal odem enachet. Here, he says, he says this mitzvah tzitzis saves a person from sin. The chesiv lo sasur achrei levavchem matiskru yisem kedoshim af the kol shar mitzvahs einbem. Zosa skula, Yeah? It doesn't. Other mitzvahs don't. 
Tzitzis Odif. Tzitzis. Kshim Vorech. Further Gimel. Tov Listaku Betzitzis B'Shas Atif Kshim Vorech. When you say the Brocha, Lissati Betzitzis, you should look at the Tzitzis before. When you say the Brocha. Then Risa Mosus Chartem, Rio may be only the Schiro, Schiro may be only Masse. Okay? Seemingly Lissatif. Before, before you, you, you wrap yourself. Well, we do. Of course, we check. It's an inspection. Pete's talking. What about if he inspected the previous day? Right, so there's no reason to look. Still, you look at them. Yeshno gilis taku b'tzitz shamigu risim oso. Velite no smal nayim. He says some have a custom. They look at the tzitzis and then they they put them on the rise. Uminig yofu v'chivu mitzvah. He says it's a proper minyog. It's a it's an occasion of endearment of the mitzvah. Hagol gamnogin k'tzas l'nashi got tzitzis pshosha ro over him. I call the chiv mitzvah. Some have a minute when they touch it to the rise, they also kiss the tzitzis then. They t- go like this, and they kiss it. It's before putting it on. No, 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 no. This is during creation. This is the now, creation. now it's during creation. Now it's creation. Okay. And what, do you, what, what does a person kiss a mezuzah? It's chibu mitzvah. Right? It's a chosen endearment for the mitzvah. You kiss a sefer Torah. It's an endearment. That's, that's all it is. Even though in uh, Tfilah Zako, that we say before Kol Nidre, it says we, we we sanctified our mouths through the kissing of the Torah. When you kiss the Torah, the Torah being holy, it sanctifies the person. Anything we do of kedusha is a sanctification of ourselves. So the same thing. It's true. It's, you have no obligation, but if you do it, it has an effect. But why do you do it? You do it because it's chivah mitzvah. It's an endearment. It's showing your love for the mitzvah. You kiss something that you have. It's endeared to you. Parchment. It's a disrespect. The it doesn't say kiss, it's touch. Touch it with your hands. So k- kissing with your mouth would be the same thing. It's not respectful. That's something else. That's something else. That's a health issue. That's a Rav Henkin. Rav Henkin speaks about that. Rav Henkin speaks about that. It's a question of saliva. It's, un- it's, it's you're not permitted to, you know, you just touch it. Touch it with your talus. It's enough. Sure. Of course, we're not touching the parchment. Right. The Morris says that a person who touches the parchment, it says he'll be nikba orum, as you touch the sa- the safer when it was unclothed. The person will be buried unclothed. Yeah. I mean, it's seemingly without shrouds. The morning shabbos we had the first parak. Morris says why? So we said he'll be orum in a mitzvah. The mitzvah of kriya Torah will not have that mitzvah. Why? was just as he showed a disrespect for the Torah by touching the parchment, therefore, when the person dies, although he has Kriya's Torah, he will, he, will, he will not be accredited for Kriya's Torah. Because of the, the disrespect that he showed to the Torah by touching the parchment. Or, he be orum, orum is naked from that mitzvah. Okay? Iranians, I remember when the Iranian boys first came over from Iran, before the fall of the Shah, you know, Iran, you know, never had yeshivas. You know that. Never had yeshivas. Any Iranian who was a little bit of Tamil Chochem, he went to Israel and went back to Iran. But the Iranians themselves never had, you know, told him how to read, little Chomish, Gemara, never had. Then Iran never produced Tamil Chochem. It goes back to Tamil Daniel, because the Gemara says that uh, Persia, they're very subject to what? To arrogance. Gaiva. There's a certain spirit there which causes gaiva, arrogance, and Torah and gaiva don't go hand in hand. A person who's self-centered, self-absorbed, he cannot he cannot uh, advance through Torah. Okay. Ben Ishkai is Baghdad. He's Iraqi. Iraqi. Okay. So he says kishem vorech shenim orishem also now al alinam dalit nimsub shem kadmoni. Said it's brought name of the Kadmonim, the earlier. If you touch the tzitzis over your eyes when you say the parsha tzitzis, you guarantee the person will not become blind. I thought this is cooler not to become blind. 
Hasumi yesh lecho zatzit. So what if a person is already blind? How does he say that they're parsha of Shema? Yechos yesh lecho zatzit biyodu b'shas kriya Shema. Api shlemo risa moso. It says, and you see it. He can't see. Kem chi yesh no v'ri yitzel acherim. Although he is not able to see, but others can see. Avla havet zitzel ein uvlo. But the rub put the tzitzel over his eyes that he should not do. The merzik chuchetlu. It's a joke. What do we say? What is he putting tzitzel on his eyes? The whole idea is. What? Because it's a school or not to be blind. Right? Or, or to show that you're seeing it, but you can't see it. What are you touching the eyes? So therefore, he doesn't. Holding it, yes. And he, he, he puts his, his, his face towards it because others. Hey. When you look at tzitzis, you look at the first the tzitzis that are in front of you. Each one has five, so you have ten. Remez Lavoyos. Yeah. We have the Esospheros, right? You have the ten levels, and they're all what? They're all linked one to another. The way he explains it. We have Yeshbem Teza and Chutim. You have eight strings in each one, so you have sixteen. Basarak Shok Shorim, so you have sixteen and ten is twenty six. That's Yud Kibov K. The front two. Ola Chovov, Bishem Havai. In fact, we don't conduct ourselves this way. I mean, we take all four tzitzis and we wrap it around. So when you're looking, you're looking at all, all four. So it's double that. The Vilna Gon held that you only hold the first two, the two in front of you, not, not the back two. That's for a different reason. He said, because it's Derech Levisha. When you normally wear a talus, you, just, you have the two in front, two in the back. Like we discussed, you know, for some people, they wear like a shawl. They gather everything out of the ground, like, like a woman. Talus, the tits is in the front, or in the front, in the back, or in the back. So this, this is a resemble, so why do we have two in the back? This is it. You have to set, see all the tits. You have to just... You, even if you take... It's insufficient. But why, but why two? So he's explaining why two. Because you have 10 plus six, 16, this is 26. I understand. But why the mitzvah is, why do we have it in the back of the church? It's a four corner garment. Right, so why we put it and that's the way it's worn. Why wouldn't this have a four corner garment with two scissors in the front? Because so the Torah says you have to put scissors all four, that's why. Why do you buy two pairs? Why do you buy a right and a left shoe? Right? I'm talking to a podiatrist now. Right? Because you have two feet. That's the reason. All right. Because it's only custom. Some people don't take the tzitzis at all, period. Creation, everybody takes the tzitzis. The question is, kiss and Shama. Most people don't even take the tzitzis. Some people say, Harani Mizami, right? When you're a little boy, and in, yeah, most people don't even say, Harani Mizami. Okay. Let, let's see the Mishnah Bura on this. Lavoyos. Hey. Pirish lesviro shem shur v'achud mizebazeh. The ten knots, it corresponds to the esospheros, which they're all linked to one another, one on top of the other. Just, we're going to finish. Godel onesh avatul mitzitzitzis. Great is the punishment the person who's mevatul does not fill mitzitzitzis. But all of them are lechos become for sorets. Hazor mitzitzitz zoch rope in the But the person who is careful regarding mitzitzitz, he will merit to see the accounts of the shchino. See Mishabura. Hazor mitzitzitz is mitzlasus talus noy. What is all here? Mean a person doesn't zakei levan ve. You do it in the most in, in the most special, meticulous, respectful way. Mitzlasus talus noy v'tzitzis noy. The garment should be. Pleasant and beautiful, and the tzitzis within chol mitzvah surah lasos and behidur chol madevsher. Person should do a mitzvah in the most respectful way. Shenema zekhel manveu. It's not the fun of the mitzvahs. Kmar Shabbos avol also lirkom psukim shel tur batalus. What about to embroider psukim on the talus? He says that you're not permitted to do. But if, let's say, they had embroidered, 
psukim, you permit it to say a brachim at talus, vafalpi, vaaf al mapos. Some people they have psukim embroidered on 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 uh, on a table cover, on a tablecloth. A more than hetel chatchil lukom dibreiter. It's not not appropriate. Many years ago, there was a person who was a rav in a in a in Hasidim called a little shul a shtibul. This person with the Lithuanian Jew, they used to, on the Lower East Side, they used to call it a chevra. It was a chevra, you daven the chevra. Chevra this. So, uh, this person came from Europe, he was a teenager, he studied in NYU in the 20s. 20s. In, in the 20s, Yeshiva University was called Eitz Chaim. It was the Lower East Side, there was a building, it, was called, it be, eventually became the Polish Yishtibel. So, outside there was a plaque, it, it was engraved in stone. It said Eitz Chaim. It was the region. That's why you started. So Reb Chaim Salvechik had a half brother who was a was a Rosh Hashiva there. His name was Reb Simcha Salvechik. Reb Chaim the Beis Halevi had a number of marriages. So this was a brother, a younger brother of Reb Chaim. His name was, was Reb Simcha Salvechik. So at one time you had multiple Jewish newspapers. Jews read a Jewish paper. It's called the Zeitung, right, David Zeitung, okay? That, yeah, but, but they used to have multiple, and very often they would actually print Divrei Torah in, in the in the newspaper. So what would happen? They printed, then people would throw it away. No, they would throw it away, throw it in the garbage. So he said uh, he t- this person who was then already I'm talking in, in the sixties, man already close to seventy years old. He said. His Rebbe, Reb Simcha Zalvechik, says, "A Yiddish Zeitung, it's for wrapping Shmalzarik. That's what it's for. It's not to put different Torah there. You don't put different Torah in a in a, in a Zeitung, right? No, it's, you wrap Shmalzarik. You used to go to, to an appetizing store where they wrap that the Shmalzarik in. And what's his name? And yes, some right. saying embroidery. Where do psukim belong? They don't belong on a tablecloth. They don't belong on a talus. It's not respectful. It's not respectful. It's, it's not appropriate." If it's there, you permit it to say the bracha on the talus. So you put the bracha on the bracha is not a posuk. It's not a posuk. And they don't. Today you find it. You don't, and one time they did. Today you don't find it. What? I've seen the bracha on the Torah. I'm telling you. But today it's less. Only people who wear the, the green and the red and, the, 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 you know, the multi-strike the talus. You know? That they they bought it they bought it in the gift store in the Rova you know that that those uh, that talus usually has took them on it. So the is not a It's a It's a It's not appropriate. The color covers often have, you know, something. Which is no, that's uh, no, it's not a posuk. It's not a posuk. No, it's not a posuk. The cover shabbos. Yeah. That's a bracha. It's a bracha. It's a bracha. It's not. It's a nice also at that. Yeah. Sometimes you have cups, silver cups, especially if it's if, if Svartim, Yemenites, you have all kinds of Kabbalistic engravings on the cup. I'm not sure, you know. Maybe because the, the cup itself is only for, for Kedusha. You say a brach on it, a tablecloth, you put plates on it, you, you put your elbows on it, it's not appropriate. Is that the place you should have psukim? The talus you wear wraps your body, even though. The other, is easy. It, it, it's, it's considered a benediction. He's still, he's still putting, he's still leaning on it. Okay, let's see the Nesos Sharon. In regards to um, touching the Torah, I thought there was a mission that said there's a Tekan Sakhama. If you touch it, if you, if you touch it accidentally, now, not that you, let's say, or so far, let's say, works with a safe guitar. He touches it. Right. He has no choice. It's not stored with food. In the yeah, that's the smart. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. But other than that, I thought that was the reason. It's a, it's a metamic to your dying. It is, it is. But it's also... No, that's respect. why it's metamic. That's why it's metamic. It's, it's two separate things. So right. why should it contaminate? Where would the safe guitar, where would have, have the contamination? Because so people, right because they used to keep the truma, the truma, they used to keep right. it in the Kodesh. So the, the rodents would go and they would know, they would eat up the Sifri Torah. Because the food was, was together with the Sefer right. Torah. I thought that was the reason why people shouldn't touch it. No, no, no. No, no. 
not the reason. That's that, that is out of respect. Right. That's it. It's a disrespect. And what was the source of that? Gemara. Same Gemara. It's earlier in Shabbos. Dafyud. Take Dafyud. What? It's not a Sefer Torah. Well, let's say it is. Let's say. Let's say. Let's say it's, let's say it's completed, right. and uh, the, the, or let's say you, you finish the same and the person puts the last letter in. So when you write the letter, you change because right. you have no choice. Okay. Many years ago, there was a, a member of Knesset. His name was Ravitz. Today also, I think there's Ravitz, maybe one, maybe it's some. So he used to, so years ago, he came for um, for Pilim to speak. Go back, like Pilum is an organization uh, where they used to go into the convents and take kids out of the missionaries in Israel. Rabaran Kotlo Zechzar who was the founder of Pilum in the 50s. And um, she so used to say that if you work in a, in a print shop with a print svarim, the threat of the Shemus, right? Because you have all kinds of cuttings and uh, galleys, it's all over the floor. It, it's, it's inevitable. You're going to step on, on, the, on the Seamus. On pages of Gomorrah or whatever swarm they he says, the threat of the Seamus, trampling on the Seamus. So he says, uh, in people, you know, being let to go, being, being converted to, to Christianity, the threat of Neshamas. Wherever you turn, the threat of Neshamas, you're trampling on souls. You have all these souls that you, you could save with a minimal amount of money or effort. And people they just ignore it. That, that, that's what that was the expression to use. Is that, is that why we have some from people come here? Some from people come it's here. not people. Leib Lachen. Which we used to be. No, no.